Hi there, and greetings to all of you from Monastery of Ostrog, Montenegro. I didn't have chance and time to continue this show of mine for a pretty long time, since I had uh, another duties. First of all, I have spent about a month and a half being on uh, Holy Mount of Athos in Greece. To all of you who don't know, it is a peninsula called Halkidiki, and uh, it looks like a hand with three fingers. One of those fingers is a little peninsula called Athos, and it is a monastic republic. There, monks live in a very harsh way of life, completely isolated from the world, although people from the world can go there and visit, but most of the monks, they don't go out, they live there in a monasteries or in a small monastic habitations called skits, or they live completely alone in hermitages. It is always very great joy and uh, very important for us monks and uh, I'm sure for every Christian, of course, for Orthodox Christians in the first place, because it is very inspiring and very um, life-giving and spirit-giving place to be there since people who dedicated their lives in uh, this way of living are very special personalities and they acquire through this way of very harsh and very serious spiritual life, they acquire deep inner peace, joy and insight in the secrets of this life. And most of all they acquire, if they really dedicate themselves to the uh, ascetic feet, they acquire a gift of the Holy Spirit, which transforms them and makes them divine. And it is always very inspiring to be there. And this time I had the opportunity and uh, great joy to go there with my dictaphone and to make a reportage about Holy Mount Athos. And on the uh, other dictaphone, I made uh, interviews with some of the fathers from this monastic republic, which was... Um, broadcasted in our radio Svetigora, in our radio show about monastic life. Then I had a, a certain medical intervention in Belgrade, so after all these happenings I finally came back to my uh, monastery of Ostrog, to my monastic cell, and uh, now I have decided and uh, prepared myself to continue with this radio show called The Way, The Truth and The Life. So there was a uh, three series and this is the uh, fourth one. And if I remember well, the third one finished when I visited my Christian friend Darko from New York, who came from Sydney, Australia, when he told me that he was an Orthodox Christian, myself being stupid and uh, spoiled snob, I felt very disappointed expecting from him to tell me that he uh, discovered some special, not discovered yet to me and not known to me yet, some Far East technique, meditation or something like that. So I uh, said, thanks Darko, but I have to go home. And not to repeat, I had to go back tomorrow again and to ask for forgiveness and that I had to apologize myself how I actually reacted. And uh, when he opened his door to me for the second time, next day, the very next day, I didn't have, uh, I couldn't wait any longer. He opened the door of his apartment and uh, he greeted me very joyfully without any uh, anger or whatever, you know. And uh, I said, Darko, my friend, Tell me, what's your philosophy? Because I don't know what is my philosophy anymore in my life. The latest philosophy of my life is emptiness. Emptiness and deep disappointment. Disappointment with life, with my life, and with life in general. And uh, the whole thing to be worse. My late philosophy is actually a thought about, of suicide. Although it was not that close to me, but for the first time in my life, the thought of suicide came to my mind, which was 
terrifying enough. And he said, well, first of all, this is not philosophy. Second, I'm not a philosopher. I'm just a simple Orthodox Christian. And uh, being very kind and nice man, young man, he told me, he tried to explain to me what the uh, Christianity is and uh, what kind of life does he lead right now. He was fasting and he was in a period of great Lent and he was preparing for communion, for the greatest Christian celebration, feast day, the uh, Easter, or better to say, the resurrection of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. And uh, he told me about those things pretty much, but then he said, but you know, my friend Atsa, I'm not a theologian, nor some very advanced Christian in the Christian spiritual life, but I have a book and I would gladly offer this to you, if you agree, to read it. And uh, by the reading of this book, you can acknowledge more, much more about my faith and much better than this uh, poor explanation of mine. And I said, of course, of course, I would like to read because I, I always liked to read and uh, I was always reading something, books, of course. And uh, he gave me a book from a certain Bishop Nikolai Velimirovich, which I never heard of. And this book was called Religion of Njegos. Njegos was political and religious leader of uh, Serbian people who live in Montenegro, better to say Crna Gora in Serbian language, or in English Black Mount. Uh, lately, uh, the, uh, the government of this independent country now, they are calling their country by the uh, name from another language. And I would expect that to be in English, because today the English is universal language, but somehow being close to Italy and thinking that this is something very uh, I don't know, lofty or a very uh, civilized culture to call their country Montenegro which is an Italian name. So it was always uh, kind of ridiculous to me. But anyway, the Njegos was uh, the bishop and the political leader of this small country, which was uh, pretty uh, usual in the history of this part of Serbian people. Because, of course, for those who don't know, the uh, Montenegro is part of Serbian land and uh, Montenegrians are Serbs, basically. But only by that toponym, they are called Montenegrians or Crnogorci because they live in this part of Serbian land called Crnogora, Black Mount. And uh, besides that, he was uh, a very uh, enlightened person. He was a great poet. I can freely say that he was, and he is probably the best and the biggest poet of uh, Serbian people and in Serbian language. Although people from this independent new country now they say this is not Serbian language this is Montenegrin language which is also absolutely ridiculous because it is the uh, Serbian language with a little little local variations but they are absolutely not big enough to be called language but this is not the uh, topic of this lecture and uh, Njegos was extremely spiritual person the person of deep prayer in the first place. And uh, he was uh, actually a prophet. And uh, not that long time ago, the uh, Montenegrian part of Serbian church called uh, Mitropolia of Montenegro and the Seaside, uh, they uh, canonized Njegos, Petar Petrovic Njegos. They canonized him officially to become saint, although he was celebrated by people a long time ago. And uh, I must admit that, uh, first of all, never heard of Bishop Nikolai Velimirović, nor Njegos was never, ever very important, interesting to me. But anyway, out of respect to my friend Darko, I uh, accepted the book. And uh, after a little bit more of our conversation, I uh, had to go because I was tired. It was... Uh, evening after a long working day in New York, which was never easy. 
And I said, Darko, my friend, thank you very much. And uh, I hope see you soon. Now I'm leaving. And he said, okay, I believe. The, I hope that uh, this book will be of uh, certain benefit to you. And I replied, I believe so as well. So I went home and uh, since I was at that time, I remember, I think I mentioned that lately I was not in very good relation with my uh, partner Gigi and his uh, wife. I, when I arrived at our common apartment, I just had a cup of milk. I uh, went to the bathroom and uh, just continued straight to my room. Being very tired, I uh, have decided to read a little bit of this book and to go to sleep, which I uh, did. I laid down in my bed, I turned on my reading lamp and started to read with this idea to read a few pages maybe and then to, uh, to use it as a nice way to fall asleep. But it happened to be absolutely different. I have to say that many years before that I was very much into the uh, Far East religions, especially in Zen Buddhism, but Hinduism as well was very interesting to me, and Buddhism in general. So I was very much tuned, uh, if I can say this way, to that way of thinking, and to these terminologies, terms, and this way of uh, explanation, the life, the uh, universe, and things like this. And uh, I was definitely not ready for uh, some hard Christian literature, especially with no concrete mentions of Jesus Christ. And uh, to, make thing, to make the whole thing uh, very, very, very uh, beautiful and very, very mystical and very uh, serious about the providence of the Lord, the Lord, the creator of the universe, saw my poor little wounded heart and he realized that I'm looking for him, that I'm longing for him, but that I just don't know what I'm looking for. He knew that if he gives me some hard Orthodox Christian book about Christianity, about Jesus Christ and Virgin Mary, that most likely I would refuse it. So it was very providential that my friend Darko gave me this book where this extremely well-educated, I have to say this in the first place, Bishop Nikola Velimirovich, and of course, even more than that, spiritual man. In this book, this is one of, he wrote a lot. His corpus of his work is enormously big. But uh, this book was one of his early works. And uh, in this book, I have to say also that uh, Bishop Nikolai Velimirovich, in his youth, he was very much inclined towards India and towards Indian religions. So he was still in this book, of course, he was, this was Christian book, he was talking about Christian God, but more about God the Father, the creator of the universe. And in a way, in a terms that was very close to me, being very close in a way of uh, terms and way of explanation, I think close the, uh, to the Far East way of talking and this captured me immediately when I started to read but in the same time I realized it is not a Far East it is not Indian literature it is not Hindu it's not Buddhism it is Christianity but in a way that I never knew that Christianity could be expressed and uh, it really uh, gave me a desire to continue and uh, as far as I was uh, proceeding in reading this book Slowly I started to realize and to feel this very subtle, very very fine and very beautiful feeling in my heart, in my soul. And I can explain it as a therapy. I felt that something is healing my soul during the reading of this book. I really felt very peaceful, very joyful, very content and it surprised me. I have to admit, it really surprised me because I do not remember a spiritual, philosophical book that I have read which gave me this kind of feeling during the reading. And somewhere deep in myself I realized that something serious is going on 
in this text.
Welcome to our radio show, The Way, The Truth, The Life. Of course, I didn't stop. I uh, absolutely got awake and uh, there was no word about sleep. So I continued to read and I realized that this man, Bishop Nikolai Velimirovich, is not talking about that much about Njegos, as a matter of fact. But he was talking about the creator of the universe. And he was really using these terms, creator of the universe. He didn't talk about much about Jesus Christ. And I realized that this text is very lofty, is very sublime, is very deep, very serious, very mystical, very philosophical. And I was so stunned, I couldn't believe that a Christian bishop, some Christian priest, pop as we say, was able to talk in a such a highly expressed language, highly spiritual, highly mystical language. And more than that, he was a Serb. I must admit, I'm Serb. I'm coming from Serbian people, from Serbian country, where orthodoxy is traditional religion. But I really never had some kind of very high opinion about my people, although I love my people. I don't want to say that uh, I had this opinion that today's Western world have about Serbs. No, not this way. But I never thought we are something special, especially not in a spiritual way. But here in this book, I realized that I basically never came in touch with such deep, mystical, religious text and meaning and uh, in about a couple of hours of reading this book somewhere before dawn I realized that something beautiful happened to me that my wounded soul my painful heart relaxed and I felt this very feeling from long long time ago that I forgot long time ago something that I was feeling when I was child this serenity this uh, being without worries, being without fears, being without doubts, simply said being like a child, clean and satisfied as a child. And I definitely realized that Christianity is not something simple, something that you don't have to pay any attention that I used to believe before. But of course, I uh, finally I got tired so I, I went, I fell asleep with uh, about three quarts of book read. Quarter of book was left, but I couldn't read anymore, so I fell asleep. And of course, in a, maybe two hours I had to wake up to go to work, but I was so um, in some kind of, uh, how do you say this in English? I was so delighted about the previous reading from the previous night that I with a great joy, went to work and uh, in the course of day, when we finished our moving business, we uh, went there to um, East Village, to our store, and there I uh, had enough time to finish the book, the last quarter of the book, and uh, it was for the first time, I just couldn't wait for the, uh, for the end of the working day to run to my Christian friend Darko and to tell him that uh, it was straight in the center, it was hit in the center with his book, in the very center of my heart. And um, so when I went there, to my great disappointment, he was not at home. So I had to wait the whole next day, the night and the whole next day. Finally, he uh, came back from, he went somewhere upstate New York. So when he came back, I called him and he said, of course, you can come. So I ran there and uh, I told him that this book is beautiful. And I couldn't believe that uh, some Christian author can uh, write something like this. I thought basically everything which comes from Christianity is more or less very boring. But this was something very very, very surprising very, and extremely refreshing to me. And I said, please, do you have something else? Do you have more books? This is like a, like a food for my hungry soul. 
And he said, unfortunately, I do not have many, but I have one more. And he gave me another book. This time it was something, uh, I must say, almost completely different. In what way? Of course, it was an Orthodox Christian book. It was a much smaller book because this one was uh, something like 200 pages. This one was more, was uh, something about, small book about maybe 80 pages. And uh, the first one being very esoteric book, being very uh, philosophical, this one was uh, more like a practical guide, if I can say it this way. And this book was written by a certain monk, Nilus, from uh, Mount Athos that I have mentioned in the beginning of this lecture. He was a, a Russian man who in the, I think it was 14th or 15th century, I do not remember well right now, he went uh, as uh, many Otus Christian young men to Mount Athos, as many young men used to do from Russia and from over Balkan Peninsula. So as a young man he went to uh, Mount Athos and he became monk there. And after about 20 years of... Uh, very strong uh, and very uh, harsh fight with his passions and with his uh, human weaknesses. He acquired the gift of the Holy Spirit. He acquired the uh, deep knowledge of the mental prayer called Jesus prayer, prayer which is a contemplative prayer, prayer which in a way resembles the meditation or better to say that uh, Far East meditations resemble mental Jesus prayer and uh, with the blessing of the uh, Holy Mount Fathers he went back to his homeland to spread this holy very loved teaching called hesychasm hesychasm in English which is coming from isichasm isichasmos Greek word which root is isichia and isichia is a Greek word for silence and peacefulness, peace. So when you say isichasmos or hesychasm, it is meant the uh, mental prayer which is performed out of the tumult of the world, somewhere in the deserts or in the monasteries, which is done by repeating a certain formula which goes, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. This is the long formula, and uh, there exists shorter formula, which goes, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Basically, it's the same, and uh, we in Slavic countries, Russia and other Slavic countries, our tradition is complete, full formula, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Greek has a casts, they like to perform shorter form of this formula, of this prayer, which goes Kyrie Isu Christe Eleison Me, which means Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. And uh, this man, this holy man, holy Nilus, called Nil Sorsky, because uh, we Slavs, we do not say Nilus as Greeks say, we say Nil in a shorter form and uh, he was called Nil Sorsky which means Nil of Sora. Sora is a little river somewhere in Russia where he finally settled and where he built up a monastery where he became abbot and where he gathered a certain brotherhood. They lived a very traditional and very serious way of monastic life without uh, gathering material things and he was the um, he was one of those monks who claimed uh, that monastic life the uh, original monastic life should be extremely without comfort so it is called without gathering material things so he has written this book called the uh, tradition of spiritual life, the sayings of spiritual life. And there, in this book, I have realized that this book is very different from the uh, previous one 
which was very philosophical, very esoterical. This was a very practical one. There I have realized that what the soul, human soul is, what the uh, demons are, what kind of creatures, the demons exist, that the angels, the spirits of light and the spirits of darkness, they exist. What is actually a human life? What is actually human life dedicated to? And what it should be dedicated to? There also he explained what are the passions, what the passions are. What is the passion in this deeper, the deepest meaning? And what is the impact of passion on a certain human being who acquires, who accepts and this certain passion, for example, passion for money or passion for sex or passion for gluttony, for eating or for whatever, you know, uh, drug addiction, alcoholism, homosexualism and many other passions. What is actually the impact of the passion on the human soul, on the human person? What is the impact of demons in general to humankind? What is the uh, what is the sick soul actually? How the, what is this when the soul suffers? Which is those questions are were actually the basic questions in my life. And there, of course, he explained how to protect yourself from this poisonous radiation from the demons, from the uh, spirits of darkness, this corrosive effects that we experience from the evil spirits and this he said in that book that there is a special very specific action which gives us an arm which gives us strength and a mean how to defend ourselves and this specific and this very concrete action is called prayer but not prayer in a general meaning of, of that word that is usual to us. You know, something that somebody that goes to church and says, God, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, or read Lord's Prayer, or Our Father who art in heaven. Of course, those are very important. But there he mentioned, he meant especially the uh, mental prayer, especially on the first place, mental prayer contemplative Jesus prayer but of course also and different prayers which are performed in solitude in silence and I have realized that you can cut off from yourself and you can defend yourself and you can save yourself from the uh, radiation this poisonous radiation that comes from spirits evil spirits which are definitely existing and I could feel this deep in myself that influence which almost led me to suicide and which is leading all those poor people who commit this terrible act so I have decided to actually to check to test what really the prayer is because after those two books that I have read, deeply in myself, I have realized that God, the Lord, the creator of the universe does exist. This immense, huge creation cannot be there just accidentally, that there is a very special and very great and very beautiful and very perfect order in the whole creation which comes from the very creator of this creation and that you can get in live contact with that being, with that very mystical personality because God is not something impersonal. The Lord, the creator of the universe is absolutely personal being that you can get in personal contact. Not in some abstract contact with some with nature or with something that is everywhere some kind of unified fields 
or things like this that I was uh, taught in uh, in the uh, transcendental meditation and in of course in, in general in Far East religions so I said okay I know you are existing I know you are there and I know you are here right here before me in front of me and even in inside of me but still I didn't make contact with you and I am really longing for this I really need contact with you and I see that I almost crashed completely and I need your help I need your word I need your love I need you creator of the universe Lord God whoever you are I need you so since I have realized that by the prayer and by the uh, orthodox spiritual life you can free yourself from the passions and I had so many passions one of the basic patients of mine it was smoking cigarette smoking tobacco smoking of course many other passions but this was the one of the first ones that I have acquired in my life and many times in my youth and later I tried to quit smoking because I really uh, never felt this is really something pleasant very pleasant to me you know when you smoke it's nothing basically you know you just have a bad smell from your mouth you cough or your lungs ache you know but there is nothing comparing let's say to marijuana or to hashish where you get stoned you feel something when you smoke basically it's nothing and uh, moreover I really didn't really like to smoke anymore it gave me pain and uh, just you know coughing and uh, this bad taste in my mouth and but somehow I couldn't quit it many times I tried to quit smoking but the very next day or even the same day I couldn't stand the crisis anymore and I had to light cigarette but the thing to be worse I would always smoke more than before this weak decision to quit cigarettes and it was always like something was laughing to me something was ridiculing me something was making a fool of me saying aha you want to quit now you will see what's going to happen you will smoke even more than before so many times it happened to me so I, I have realized I am a poor wretch I'm so weak I'm not I'm not a man I'm not human I'm, I'm, I'm like a worm I do not have my word I do not have my my decision to quit something to say I will do this and this I will not do so for the first time in my life I said to myself okay I will try to quit smoking but not with my powers not with my weak decision with my claim I will stop smoking but I will try to stop smoking asking for the Lord's help so what I have decided I have decided from the next day from the next morning I will start pray I will start the prayer and I uh, constructed if I can say this way a prayer I made a prayer by myself which sounded this way Lord God help me to get freed from this passion thinking of course on smoking since I have realized in this book that with constant repeating and turning your heart and your mind towards the Lord and with constant repeating you can accomplish a lot in your life so okay the next morning I started I in my mind mentally when I was together with my partner on when I was alone orally not mentally but orally you know not very loud but enough to hear myself I started to repeat Lord God help me to get free from this passion thinking on smoking Let us 
Welcome to our radio show, The Way, The Truth, The Life. And the very beginning of the morning, or in the early morning, when I woke up, I started to, to repeat this. And uh, to my surprise, because I was never that very hard smoker. One of those who, for example, when they wake up early in the morning, the first thing is to, to light a cigarette. No, it would be very, very, very hard to me to light early in the morning. I would start to smoke, let's say, there about two or three hours after waking up. Let's say about 10, 11, whenever I wake up. And uh, of course, I never had this craving so early for cigarette. But this morning, to my great surprise and disappointment, I have realized that very moment when I woke up, I wanted to light a cigarette. And I said, what is going on? I mean, I just re have decided to try to quit smoking and this craving became so big without some kind of uh, obvious reason. But I said, okay, no problem. I made decision and I will continue repeating this prayer. And during the course of the morning, I went to the bathroom, I took a shower, then I prepared my breakfast, uh, I exchanged a few words with my partner, his wife Pamela. She already left for her job. And we were talking about some, uh, you know, technical things about the working day which was in front of us. And uh, very soon I started to feel very exhausted. My mouth became uh, very dry, with no saliva. It started to buzz in my ears. There was a, a headache growing up more in my head. And the thoughts are coming to me all the time, bombing my mind, telling me very openly, very, how can I say, uh, vividly, why are you doing this? Are you getting crazy? Are you getting nuts? Repeating this stupid sentence all the time? You're intellectual, you're a, a modern man. What are you trying to do? Are, are, you, are you doing some kind of... Uh, witchcraft or something if you want to quit smoking okay go to certain you know hospital or some kind of uh, you know uh, place where uh, those uh, professionals are helping people to, to quit smoking but just don't just stop repeating this stupid prayer or sentence whatever it is because you are going to get crazy you're going to get nuts and I was so stunned I was so surprised to listen to these thoughts in my, in my mind. And I have realized those thoughts are not mine. Some other mind is putting these thoughts in my mind very forcingly. And I, I was so confused. I didn't know what's going on. It was like a very hard conversation with somebody. It was like a quarreling with somebody. It was like a fight with, with somebody. I thought, am I really getting crazy? Am I going to talk? Am I really starting to talk to myself? Or... This is really somebody who is trying to, to stop me, what I made decision to do. And I said, okay, I'm not going to quit. And I continued to repeat this prayer. Lord God, help me to get free from this passion. So we went, we left our apartment, we came to our van and uh, started to, uh, our trip to downtown to our, to our store. 
during the uh, driving through the Manhattan, it was really bombing and ringing in my head. My mouth is, was completely dry. I didn't know what was going on. I was so confused. And I wanted to light a cigarette so badly. I, I never had a, such a great, terrible craving for cigarette before that. And deep in myself, I have realized that something really, some kind of very great fight and something very serious is going on. Yeah, but because why it would be so hard to me right now when I de have decided to try to free myself from smoking with the God's help. And what happened? And of course, Gigi realized something is really strange going on with me. He tried to, to, to start the conversation, but very soon he realized that it's meaningless, so he stopped. So we continued the second half of our trip to downtown in complete silence. I was silent and I was deep in my fight, in my struggle, not to light a cigarette. But what happened? Before we have arrived, in a second, in one part of second, for the first time from that morning, I felt some kind of uh, pause, some kind of break in this fight, some kind of break in this craving. And I felt, I don't want to smoke. I don't feel like smoking. I said to myself, what is this? What is this kind of break? What is this kind of relief? Very short, but very concrete relief from this fight. I'm not feeling like I want to smoke. But then again, it came back and the fight continued. So I, I have realized that something is happening. And in about 10 minutes, again, this relief came to me, this time a little longer. It lasted for about maybe five or 10 seconds. I was just, I was just free from this craving. I didn't have need to light a cigarette. And I realized something is really happening. Something is really cleaning me. I have to continue. So I really continued hard the rest of the day. And more and more, more often, these reliefs, these pauses, these breaks were coming to me and I was feeling that I don't want to smoke. But of course, by the very end of the day, the crisis was so strong that I couldn't exist. I couldn't exist it anymore. I couldn't uh, stand it anymore. So I had to light one cigarette. But it was only one cigarette in the evening and it was the last one in the course of that day. So I felt in a way that I didn't, that I had, uh, that I made a victory. It was really great victory to me to light only one, to smoke only one cigarette that day. So I, by the end of this day, I have realized that Lord really, whoever he is, whoever he is, whoever he might be, this creature, this very covered personality of his, helped me. He helped me. So the very next day I continued with the same fight and again I had more and more longer reliefs from this craving for the cigarette and this way it uh, happened three days. Three days I was fighting, praying all the time in myself mentally when I was together with people or silently, orally, uh, very in a low voice and thanks to the Lord and to all heavens, the fourth day I didn't light any cigarette. And I felt such a strength in myself. I felt such a great relief that I can be without cigarettes. And from that day, which was, uh, I will tell you, it was 1989, I have never lit another cigarette until today. Lord, the creator of the universe, help me. And I am with a full, fully convinced I am saying this because I knew how many times I tried to quit my cigarettes, my smoking, but I never managed to do that. And this time, invoking God, I felt this strange strength in myself that I have never felt in my life. And I definitely realized that some power from above, some high power helped me. And I have to say that this was the beginning of my Christian life. 
and I definitely came to conclusion that there is a power from above. There is a universal power. There is a beautiful, unexplainable source somewhere far away in the universe, somewhere far away and at the same time very close, source of immense power. And there is a way to receive this power, to be in contact with it, to be participant in this power, and in this way to have and to acquire extremely important benefit for your life. to our radio show The Way, The Truth, The Life and it was like a, a great, really an earthquake in my life it was like a great blow to me and I was uh, 29 at that time not very young already in a very serious age so it was a uh, a great quake in my life. So for a certain number of days, and for a certain time, I had to gather myself together again and to think over again what happened to me. Because it was like a dream. It was like a movie to me. It was like a film to me, you know? What really happened to me? I started to pray. I became a Christian or what? And I quit smoking. It was... For me, it was extremely great thing in my life. Maybe to somebody who is going to listen to this, this is not that big thing, but to me it was. Because I have realized that I have a control, I have a power, I have a control of myself. Again, I could say, I don't want to do this, and really to do that. So, in about 10 days after this, I didn't go almost anywhere in the evenings I stayed at home and I was thinking and I was praying I have to say in my way because I didn't know yet what the prayer really is but I was deeply withdrawn in myself and I was thinking what really happened who is that God who is you? who are you who are you I realized you exist you are here you're listening to me you're helping me. Is that really possible that God exists? That you, you beautiful creature, my parent, my heavenly parent, my heavenly father, you really exist. Who are you? How can I know you? How can I get close to you? Please help me. Please be with me. Never leave me anymore. What is this all about? Am I getting crazy or this is something most beautiful that could happen to me in my life and uh, so I started to pray I started to pray I didn't know for Jesus prayer still I still didn't know for that 
because I, I didn't have books about Christian life. Only those two books that I have read. Although I have realized in this book, there are prayers that they are related to the name of Jesus Christ. Although it, it was yet strange to me and really distant from me. So I started to pray every day, all the time. God help me. Very simple. God help me. And I started to repeat this in my mind all the time. And with every new invoked God's name, I felt certain pleasure in my chest, in my heart, in my soul. And this pleasure was continuing as long as I was repeating this little simple prayer, Lord, God, help me. And I don't know what was going on. I didn't know what is really, what is going on. But one thing I really knew very well, I am feeling well. I am feeling good. I am feeling pleasure deep in myself. I feel satisfied. I feel content. I feel joyful. I feel peaceful. I feel so serene. And in the meantime, the things went absolutely bad with my partner Gigi and his wife. And it came to the point where we couldn't live together anymore. And if I remember well, if I mentioned in my previous talks that I have discovered this apartment uh, through a friend of mine who was a painter, artist in uh, Greenpoint from Brooklyn. He helped me to get in touch with a certain landlord in Williamsburg. Williamsburg was a part of Brooklyn, which was uh, right next to uh, Greenpoint, which was Polish part. The Polish people used to live there. And on the second, on the another part, another side, was uh, Orthodox Jews, Hasidics, Hasidic Jews. And there I uh, have found this apartment because I have realized there is no, uh, there is not really any sense anymore to be with Gigi together in business and even more in common living. So um, without any really hard fight or hard words or whatever, I tried to to do all this in a, in a very civilized way. We uh, were, you know, regular. We were, we did this split in a in a civilized way, in a friendly way, if I can say it this way. I gave him completely everything what store and the whole everything that, that we possessed in this store and I have uh, taken a uh, van because uh, Gigi was not a driver and uh, we split our belongings this way if I can say and we uh, greeted each other and with the help of my uh, new Christian friend Darko he came one day and he helped me to uh, move my stuff, to put it in the van, and uh, I finished this part, this episode of my life in New York, and I felt very good, I felt, felt very satisfied during our drive from Upper West Side Manhattan towards Williamsburg in Brooklyn, and I was thinking how rich, basically, this period of my life in New York was because it was not very long it was a uh, little, little less than something like a little less than than two years but I have realized what the uh, really life in New York is and more important of everything that I have realized that I have found a faith I have found a living God and I have uh, discovered Christianity in the way I have never thought that Christianity is. So I was traveling towards this apartment, which was really beautiful apartment, I have to admit. It was three rooms apartment, very, 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 very comfortable, with big rooms in a very nice and quiet part of Brooklyn. Although, of course, <laughs> there is no quiet part in, in New York in general, but it was okay. It was a Puerto Rican part, but nice people, you know, sometimes they would go out uh, during the summer and they would play their cassette players very loud and kids would play around and um, they would take a shower in open hydrants. But anyway, it was very cute and it was very, uh, it was not very dangerous. So I fell in love with my new neighborhood. My landlord was a very nice lady. She was Russian, 
although American born, and she was Orthodox, but of course she didn't practice uh, her religion. But you know, for me it was something because uh, basically her father, who was uh, a main landlord, who was main owner of the building, he was uh, Russian born, of course, who came, let's say, four years ago in New York, and. <laughs> He never learned uh, well English, but he forgot his Russian, so he was very uh, grotesque person. But we could speak a little bit in some mixture of Russian, Serbian, English. So he was a nice person, very hardworking, you know, and uh, he left uh, Russia, I think, before Second World War. And um, so it was nice to me. There was a nice background with a garden and with uh, Brooklyn cats. And uh, I found myself in a completely new environment, starting new life, starting really new life, being myself now, without partner. And uh, new life opened in front of me. And I was very grateful to this God who got in touch with me, who announced himself to me in such an open way. And uh, when I moved in, when I put my things all over and uh, when Darko had his tea with me and when he went back to his home, I stayed alone and uh, with great joy in my heart, I have realized that a great new, beautiful period in my life is opening in front of me. And with God's help, I will continue about this light that have shone in my life in our new radio shows. Until then, goodbye and be joyful. Thank you for listening Radio Svetigora the radio station of the Serbian Orthodox Church, Diocese of Montenegro and the Seaside. Blessed by His High Eminence, Metropolitan Amphilochieh.